I just didn't like the direction things were going with AI and forced two-factor authentication and stuff like that. Now, to be clear, mm -hmm. uh, I do understand the merit of forced two-factor authentication, but I'm also blind, and 2FA is difficult for me. So, um, yeah, what, I would rather not be. What? But anyway. Is that... <laughs> no, actually, that is, that is kind of interesting. I hadn't really thought of that. Um, what, what is the problem with 2FA for you? So, um, now, at the time, this is how I felt. Since then, I have actually learned a little bit more about how 2FA works, and I've solved the problem. Sure. But at the time, um, when GitHub forced two-factor authentication, the options were... Th there's plenty of options, but many of them involve a six-digit code that expires every 30 to 60 seconds that I cannot read in that amount of time. So that's sure. the problem. Um, but the other options are get a code through SMS or get a code through email. Now, mm -hmm. you might realize the problem with those methods is they're insecure. Uh, like, really insecure. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, SMS, they're sim swapping. It's also being generally transferred in plain text over the air so someone can sit and, s and you know, snoop the traffic. I don't That's believe anyone's better. monitoring me, but, you know... Yeah, the, um, the... The SMS thing is getting better with RCS, um, but that's not widely rolled out for everything yet. And I don't even know if my carrier supports it yet, but either way, the other problem with SMS is if your phone's not working, mm -hmm. you can't get the codes. Yep. Now, I do have backup codes, but I don't know where they're stored, and that's my problem, but anyway, that's still a problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and the other aspect of it is I just don't... I don't like keeping my phone in the same room as me when I'm at my computer, because if I'm at my computer, most people that I actually care about can reach me through my computer. I don't need my phone spamming me with notifications and, you know, telemarketing and robocalls and stuff right, like that. Right, it's right. annoying, and, you know, if I'm going to have it silent, I may as well not have it in the same room. So my phone, when I'm done with it, goes in my bedroom. My computer is not in my bedroom. So... If I have to log into Git or GitHub, and it's forcing me to do 2FA, and the only accessible option is SMS for me, which is more secure than email, because if you have my email, then you can just get the code, but it's mm -hmm. a bit harder to get my phone number, realistically, uh, because I just don't give it out. Um, and, you know, if I have to go up two flights of stairs, go read the code, and go down and enter it in. It's just annoying, and I don't want to do it. So that made me think, okay, well, I'll just set up GitLab at home, and then I don't have to deal with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It may be less secure, but it's more convenient for me. And honestly, it is technically more secure that way, because most people don't know where my code is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Security by obscurity. Not that that's actually security, but, you know. Still. It that's that's true, but you also have to consider like the the kind of target you are, right? Like people will talk about how oh you shouldn't write your passwords down and put them on a sticky note on your computer. But if you're doing that with a home computer, like unless you're, you know, a government official, no one's breaking into your house to steal your passwords. Now if you're doing and that And if somebody with... is breaking into your house to steal your password, you have bigger problems like the person who broke into your house, period. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but, like, if you're doing that with an office computer, like, that's a very different scenario, right? Like, yeah. th people will walk by, people who maybe are in other, other apartments, maybe a disgruntled employee who wants to, like, or maybe someone who's disgruntled with you who wants to frame you for something. Like, doing that with a, in a more public setting, like, that that makes sense why that's not secure. But, or, like, my, um, my mum, for example, <laughs> she has a notepad where she writes down all her passwords. And that's not secure, but... She's also not a target for that being a problem. People need to think about, like, when, when we're dealing with security, it's... You have to think of the realistic attack vectors. Who would be trying to get this data? Because there's always going to be this trade-off between privacy and security. And you can... Like, you could store your codes in a vault at the bottom of the ocean, but, like... Is that providing any more benefit than putting them on a thumb drive that's in a cabinet? Or just putting them open in the IDE on an unlocked computer in the middle of an office building. Like, <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, 
Um, like I said earlier, that whole 2FA thing has been solved. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I ranted about 2FA in my community, and we found a solution to the problem. There's mm -hmm. a command line TOTP client that you can use. It's called COTP. Uh, it's available in the Arch repos. And it's a bit unintuitive at first with the 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 syntax of the command, mm -hmm. but like once you learn it, it's literally just you. It's encrypted, but it's stored on my computer, and I can give each. Um, I can take the the secret phrase from Google Authenticator if I'm given the option to set up Google Authenticator. I can put that into COTP, give it a label. And it'll generate a six-digit code. I enter that in, and as far as the remote site is concerned, I'm using Google Authenticator, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. And then it just works. So, because it's on my main computer now, sure, it's a bit less secure than having it on, my, on a separate device. Sure. But, you know, I have to open my terminal. I have to willingly do that. And then I have to know which key I want to get, um, because the, the, they have different labels. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have to enter a, a decryption password to actually get the code. Mm -hmm. And then I have to copy-paste that code in the website. And it, in, it sounds slow, the way I'm describing it, but it's like 5 to 10 seconds max. I have never actually had the code expire in that time. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot more convenient, and most things support it now, uh, like Discord. I have it working there. I have it working on my authentic authentic server so all my self-hosted stuff is protected and has two-factor now um so it's been really handy the only one i haven't done it for yet is github because i honestly don't care enough about my github account to go and, and fix it sure i think there's a, a thing that people don't actually realize about otp i when i did my video on github uh, 2fa all of the people in the comments were saying i don't want to use my phone for 2fa I don't think there's a lot of people that realize that OTP is not Google Auth or is not like any of these other authenticator applications on your phone. It is a protocol that can be implemented in other things. I believe Bitwarden has support for generating OTP codes now. So like there, there are ways that you can do it on your computer. There are ways you can do it with things that are not in your phone but because yeah. the things that are like usually when there's like the tutorial on hey setting up 2fa it's going to show you how to use google auth or whatever microsoft's one is so i can and, understand why people get confused about it and even more and this is more of a U us problem in my opinion mm -hmm. when there is the option for otp it's not clear that it's otp because mm -hmm. it's labeled as google authenticator and right. it tells you you got to go get your phone and install the app and then scan the qr code and sometimes you don't even get the secret phrase that is behind that qr code you have to mm. somehow scrape it it's not always displayed sometimes it's displayed in a format that isn't compatible with the client you're using and you have to fix it in the text editor it's not intuitive at all mm -hmm. um but luckily i have a community of people who like help me with this stuff so i was able to figure it out mm -hmm. uh, but not everybody has that and that's a little frustrating because mm -hmm. then you know less people use 2fa and then ultimately it gets a bad rap and then People's accounts get hacked, and they wonder why. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, like if you're <laughs> if you're the kind of person who uses the same password for everything, and you're not using two FA, just give up. Just give up. Just what are you doing? Like yeah. And even me, like I you, I don't know any of my passwords. I know my Bitwarden decryption key, and I know my two FA decryption key. That's it. I don't know any of my actual passwords because they're three miles long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speaking of that, I, I hate when websites put in just weird, arbitrary, like, restrictions on the password and don't explain it initially. I've had sites where I generate, you know, I usually, I think I have bit more than set usually, like, 50 characters. So I will generate a 50-character code, and some sites will truncate what I enter. So I save the password, I try to log in, and it's like, oh, password's wrong. Like, what do you mean password's wrong? <laughs> I literally just said it. I've, it. I've just copied it in. But it didn't actually set the password that I had set. Here's a fun one. Mm. My bank. I'm not going to name them because of the security flaw. Sure. Um, it may have been patched since then, but um, a few years ago, uh, I needed to reset my password for a reason. Um, and I went to generate one of my three-mile-long random passwords through Bitwarden. And I entered it in, and the bank uh, started spinning. 
okay. it's spinning, spinning, and all of a sudden, uh, five hundred three service unavailable. <laughs> a Pat Heaver in two point four on Ubuntu. I crashed the banking software, Brody. Mm hmm. It was out for a good two hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It was because there was an exclamation point in the password. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I know there's a lot of people out there that like to intentionally set usernames and passwords that just, they know are going to cause a problem for someone like, you know, including an open bracket, including a quote mark, um, you know, exclamation marks, just, just things that should be getting escaped and depending on the language is going to cause serious problems. Yeah. So in my case, I just hit copy and hit paste and then trashed it. Like, what do you want me to do, banking software? 